I hope there's film in this. Today, we got the Bolex. Uh, we loaded it up with some 250D that had been sitting in the fridge for quite a while. So I'm rating this stuff at 100 ISO. Longtime friend of the channel, Jordan is out with me today and we're out and around and we're shooting various uh, nice looking independent theaters here in Toronto. The Kingsway Theater. Uh, we're by what? Bloor in Royal York? I've, I'm lost. Kingsway has been around since 1939 and they probably have one of the best looking marquees in the, 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 the city for these older ones because I think they underwent a renovation in the last um, few years. I haven't been to this one personally. Jordan, I don't I know what a movie is. Okay, great. The Rock and a Bill and Ted face the music poster. So it is summer of 2021. I've set up a variety of surprise guest stars from your past, each more surprising than the last. Mother. Oh wait, wait here we are, right in front of us. Oh. <laughs> you could have one bootleg tape of a major motion picture as shown in this window. Which one would it be? Um, I don't know, Sky would be pretty fun. I'm thinking uh, Pitch Black, the first uh, Riddick movie. Oh yeah, okay. This one's the Review Cinema. Uh, the review's been around since like 1911, 1912. And, Jordan, uh, it's a heritage site. Mm. Yeah. 16. My sister and I went here to see a 35 millimeter screening of the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie from the 90s, which definitely holds up. Uh, and I think they screen a lot of stuff on 35 as well. I've been here once. And it was a very good time. I saw a double feature of The Blair Witch Project and Hellraiser 3. So we are in West Entrance. We, we came here. That's our boy, the Sinosphere. How's it look? Terrible. Nothing wow. with it. It's great. Beautiful, isn't she? We're down now by the Sinosphere. Uh, we're really south in Toronto, right on Lake Ontario here, and uh, we're just doing a little uh, little walk around the Sinosphere. The Sinosphere has been around since the 1970s and I've talked about it in a much older video on the channel about IMAX. It was the first permanent IMAX theater because a lot of these used to be just like temporary kind of expo installations. Okay, if that's the Sinosphere, what's that over there? Oh no. This, this, we've gone all the way to the Epcot uh, Center. Yeah. <laughs> I'm never going to get to touch the Sinosphere. I promised Jordan he could touch the Sinosphere. Here's a, here's a patented Noah uh, fun fact. Uh, on a single foot of... Oh no. Uh, here's a patented Noah fun fact. <laughs> a, a single foot of 16 millimeter captures 40 frames of film. So do with that what you will. What a fun fact. Well, I thought maybe it would go somewhere, but that, that's the <laughs> yeah. fact. We're down the street from the TIFF Bell Lightbox. Uh, and Jordan, Jordan's gonna do some shots of the tip theater. Jordan, do good? We'll find out in several weeks. <laughs> really cool theater uh, and screens such a great amount of stuff and they're also uh, in conjunction with the Toronto International Film Festival, but it's also the least interesting of all the exteriors that we've shot, um, so. That's, that's something. Uh, Pat did know a fun fact once again for you, Jordan, and you, the audience. Uh, like the building that, that TIFF is, that portion of that area of the city, was given to 
them to build the, the theater on by Ivan Reitman. Ivan Reitman, of course, directed such hits as, uh, I don't know, a little movie maybe called uh, Ghostbusters. Uh, you ever heard of uh, Meatballs? You ever heard of uh, Godfather Part 2? Uh, I really gotta check them out. We've walked, how many kilometers do you think we've walked today? We've uh, walked a lot. Four. Four? Four. I think we've walked more than four. Yeah. Uh, we're outside the Carlton, Carlton Cinemas, uh, which is on College Street, just off College and Young. Uh, it's on Carlton Street, actually. Right, never mind, fine. Do you ever work on just like a movie that you're like, this ain't going anywhere? It often plays at the Carlton. Really? Yeah, I think it's the best theater to rent. This one's been around since the 80s, and uh, it says that it was on the former site of the Odeon Theater, which was around for like the 40s into the 70s as well. Just here, like five, six, and eight. Cool. Hot Dogs, Ted Rogers Cinema. Uh, the hot dog cinema screens things pretty routinely throughout the year, but they're also big for the hot dogs uh, documentary film festival in the city as well. The theater that hot dogs is has gone through so much. So it's hot dogs in 2011. In 1913, it was the Madison Picture Palace, which is a great name for a theater. 1940 became Midtown Theater, and then it was renamed to the Capri in 1967. And then in 1970, it became the Eden, which was an adult cinema till it was uh, called just the Bloor in 1979. And then it became just the hot dog cinema at some point. Uh, so a long, long history for that one. Framing, uh, you yes. move it into the top position, okay. and then you look through this one, okay. and that'll show you what's in the top position mm -hmm. on, on this model. Mm -hmm. Rotate this okay. into this position, which okay. is your shooting lens. We use the far viewfinder yep. for framing, cool. uh, and that's why you can adjust it to different focal lengths, so yep. make sure it's dialed to 25, because you're shooting at the 25. I am realizing that not all of these are technically like independent theaters, but pretty much anything that isn't part of like Cineplex, which is the big theater chain here. We didn't go to because the exterior is or was under construction, uh, is the Royal, which is also a really big independent theater in Toronto as well. So, sorry, the Royal. Favorite thing I saw at the Royal was they did a uh, 35 millimeter print of uh, Class of 1984, which is an exploitation film. It's a very like angry, angry movie, and the film print was really damaged, and so half of it had turned red. Oh, okay, and it yeah. completely worked for the movie, and the movie oh, yeah. was better having it turned the magenta red. Magenta shift. I'm without Jordan now, and I'm doing the last few here that I want to get to and just like shoot some of the outside of. I'm over by Mount Pleasant. Mount Pleasant Theater and uh, Regent Theater Toronto are within like a four minute walk of each other. Uh, the Regent, I believe, has undergone a more recent restoration, so they have a nice little marquee out front of their building. And the Mount Pleasant Theater is in need of some love. They have a really nice old school sign above like the entryway, but uh, it really could use like a restoration. I believe both are also heritage sites in Toronto, so there's not uh, any danger of these things being turned into condos, unlike uh, like anything else, I guess. Over in the east end of Toronto, in the area called The Beaches, is the Fox Theater. It's been around since 1914. It hasn't always been called the Fox Theater, but it has been continuously in use. In fact, according to the website, it is the oldest theater in Toronto that has been continuously operating. The Review Cinema is the oldest, but it hasn't always been in operation. The Fox is just a cute little theater that has a nice little marquee at the outside of it, and they underwent a restoration in 2007, so it is in great shape. Yet another one in the city that I have not had a chance to go to, but I'm hoping to once it reopens. My girlfriend uh, grew up in the area a little bit more, so she actually has a lot of memories of going to this nice little theater. Uh, it's starting to rain once again, but that is a few, not all of, but some of the great theaters in the city. Some of them show film, some of them show new releases, some of them show independent stuff and like a variety of documentaries and things like that. Really important stuff that's 
exists in Toronto. These are things that I hope to see thrive when everything kind of opens back up a bit more and when theaters are a little more active again in general. And especially as great landmarks, buildings, and just resources in general are kind of torn down, gentrified, turned into condos, more weed stores. It's important to keep in mind the value of these places and also to just kind of seek out and, you know, go to and explore the local stuff and the independent stuff that exists in your city. The 16 millimeter is going over to Niagara Custom Lab here in Toronto for processing and scanning. So that's what you'll be seeing in this video. Check that out in the description along with information for Pro 8 millimeter, another lab that I use and love that are based in California in the States. Merch for the channel, the opportunity to support this stuff. And if you wanna see more, especially 16 millimeter, uh, the Patreon, the PO Box, all that great stuff. And uh, I'll see y'all soon. All right, Jordan, go touch the Cinesphere. Thank you.